So this week I was talking with a Discord member and he reminded me of a very clean website that's actually made by a designer on YouTube. And there's this animation that I find quite interesting. And so I spent a couple of hours to study it and I came to a similar result using Next.js and Framer Motion. And if you're interested to try it out for yourself, there's a link to the demo and to the source code in the description below. So the way I made this animation was by using the CSS mask image property. And we're going to animate it using Framer Motion, which will create this kind of cursor effect. All right, so I start this animation by creating two main division, one called a mask and one called a body. And then I add some styling, giving the main container a height of 100 viewport width and the two divisions a height and a width of 100%. I center everything using the display flex and I add a font size, a color and a font. All right, so here's the result. We have two division with a paragraph inside of them. They take the full height and the full width of the container. And now the first thing we want to do here is overlap the mask division on top of the body. So to do that, we can go inside of the styling and then we can specify that the mask should have a position absolute and now it's on top of the other one and now we need to hide it at first and only reveal the body and so for that we're going to use a mask and to create the mask we can go in figma and inside of figma we can create a circle and the size doesn't matter we can also put it black and then we can just export it as an svg and then we can take it and drop it inside of the public folder and then we are done with figma and then i'm just going to rename that the mask.svg and then i can specify a mask image and then i'll also add a background color just so we can see what's going on and so here it is we have our mask being repeated all over the place so we can just do like mask repeat and just do a no repeat and so we have the body here which is the paragraph that we're gonna see at first and then we have the mask which is on top of the other one and only this part is revealed from that division and so the principle here is we're basically going to change the mask position for example if i do 50 percent and i can do like a mask size of 500 pixel and I'm going to do color black. Here's what we're going to do. We're basically going to change the mask position by moving the mouse and it's slowly going to reveal the content of the mask division. So I'm just going to reset everything back to 40 pixel. And now we're done with CSS. We're going to start using JavaScript to get the position of the mouse. I've created a utils folder and a use mouse position file inside of it. And then here I can create a component which will basically be a hook where we can extract the position of the mouse from it. And so the first thing we need is to import the use state and the use effect hook uh, from react and then we can export a default function that we're going to call uh, the use mouse position and here we can create a state for the mouse position and then initialize it at like x0 and y0 and then we're basically going to return that mouse position and now to update that state we can create the use effect here we can add an event listener for the mouse move event which will trigger a function that we can call update mouse position and then we also need to add a cleanup function and so here we're just going to window the remove event listener and then we can create that function here here, and it takes an event as a parameter and then I can simply do a set mouse position set on the X the client X and on the Y the client Y and with that we effectively have a use mouse position hook that we can use in the main component and here I'm going to do use client to be able to use that hook and then I can import the use mouse position hook and from that hook I can extract the x and the y and with that I have the x and the y position of the mouse inside of the page.js component and now I basically need to use those values to change the mask position so I'm going to use framer motion for that I'll import motion from framer motion and then I'm going to add the motion to the mask here and here I can basically animate a couple of properties one of them we said is the mask position right so we could do mask position like this but it's not going to work we need to specify the webkit mask position and we can just use the x and the y value from the use mouse position hook and we can do on the x will be the x in pixel and on the y will be the y in pixel and then we can save that and try it out okay here i forgot to call the use mouse position hook i need to call that function all right so here's what we have there's a couple of problems one is the easing is a bit off and two is the cursor is not aligned with our mouse and so we're going to tackle the first problem here which is basically the, the transition is a bit off right it's a, it's not really usable so what we can do here is add a transition and we're going to specify the type of transition that we want and we want to have a tween which is a duration based transition and then we're also going to specify a certain easing which is the back out and this one is really nice for like a cursor animation we have something much more clean here and we can see that there's like a bit of physics the the cursor kind of wobbles back if i move so it's kind of nice and then i need to center the cursor because right now it's a bit off there's like an offset so what we can do here is specify the size of our mask is 40 right we specified in the css here that the mask size should be 40 pixels 
pixels. So we're going to have a size of 40. And then on the X, we can simply remove the size divided by two and on the Y, the size divided by two as well. And if we save that, we have this amazing cursor here at the mouse with a nice easing. And if we hover on the text here, you can see that it's revealing the content of the mask division. But obviously here, it's a bit too small. We don't really see anything. And so for that, we're going to create an is hovered state. So here I'm importing the use state hook from React and I'm creating an is hovered state and then I'm toggling that state when hovering on the paragraph. And now that we have that, we can then have a conditional size by checking if we are hovered, then we want to have maybe a 400 size and else we want to have a 40. And then we can specify here the WebKit mask size to be the size. And I'm going to add the pixel values here. And if we save that, we now have this amazing animation. And so that was it for this animation. Very easy to do. And with that, we can create like a nice narrative design. And yeah, if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.